Good morning, Gateway. Happy Canada Day. Would you stand with us this morning? Come on, put your hands together. Let's sing this morning. for this weekend and for the, what we have in store for you this morning. If you have kids here, we have an excellent and fun children's program that's happening right now. So feel free to bring your kids out to the atrium and someone can direct you where to go. As well, if you have students grades six to eight, there'll be something for them as well during the talk portion this morning. Just wait for a slide to pop up and it will tell them when to go. If you would like prayer this morning, we have a prayer room that's accessible all throughout this morning service. It's right out the doors to my left here, and someone will be more than happy to pray with you or talk with you about your week or whatever that you're going through. 
As well, if you're new here, we just want to say welcome. We are so glad that you're joining us this morning. We would love an opportunity to get to know you a little bit better. We also have a gift for you. So you can meet us up at our Connect wall. It's a blue wall right on the atrium, and we will give that to you there. I'm going to give you a few minutes now to mingle around, maybe meet somebody new, and find out what people are doing this Canada Day weekend. So good to have you all with us here today. Love to see you enjoying one another's company. It's Canada Day weekend. We celebrate 
our wonderful country that we live in. We're also calling Sundays uh, Beat the Heat Sundays, and so for a few of the Sundays throughout the summer months, we've got some nice ice-cold treats outside, and so uh, you want to make sure that you get yourself a popsicle, get something cool on your way out here today, and on us, we've got some tattoos. If you want to put some Canada Day stickers on or some of those things, we just want to celebrate and uh, have you enjoy with your families here this weekend. We also have some brand new t-shirts that uh, for our summer, our summer t-shirts are now finally here and they're available. And I want to give a couple of them away. So how am I going to do that? Well, first of all, if somebody can tell me, the first person can come up here and tell me how old is Canada? How old is Canada? 150. Wrong. How old is Canada? 151. Wrong. 152. There you go. Now, the next person, I have one more t-shirt I want to give away to the person who can tell me what year was Canada born. 1867. There you go. There you go. T-shirts go on sale. They are on sale right now. They're $25. Once they're gone, they're gone. We won't be doing any reorders as well. This would be the moment when if you come from a traditional church where we would practice generosity by giving, we don't do that here. We have a variety of ways in which you can give online by debit. You can give out in the atrium today. If you came and you wanted to give cash or check, you can do that. There's a secure area. You can put that in there. Thank you. As you're generous, you allow us to be generous because that's what we love to do. We love to give uh, uh, here in the city of London and around the world. So thank you for your generosity today. We're going to continue to worship him in just a few minutes. And or second. And or so why don't we stand and sing this <laughs> one? <laughs> and we're going to sing a new song this morning called Good Grace. And you guessed it, it's about how good God's grace is. I'm going to invite you to sing it with us in just a few moments and or minutes. Come on, let's sing this together. People come together, strangers made our blood is one, children of generations of every nation of kingdoms come. So don't let your heart be troubled. Hold your head up, I don't fear no evil. Fix your eyes on this one truth. God is madly in love with you. So take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where our help comes from.
wait for it to happen. We can declare it in Jesus' name. Come on, we sing it out this morning. To what oh, you can let the place go up as the walls come down. Our creation, everything with breath, repeat the sound. All the children, we let your heart to whisper God.
you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna Come on, let's sing it again this morning. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You are good, you're good. morning and we worship you today Jesus you are good we declare that this morning in our song God you are awesome and we are here for you today God in your mighty name I pray amen amen thank you for singing with us this morning you may be seated seconds turn to someone and tell them what is it about Canada that you love so much go Okay, okay, good morning, good morning and a welcome to Gateway, welcome on this Canada Day. We love our country, we love being Canadian, I love being Canadian. For those of you who are new to our country, or if this isn't your country of origin, please know we are so glad that you are here no matter what, we are better with you than without you, so thank you for being a part of our country and our community from far and wide. God's hand is on us and upon us. 
And you know there is so much anxiety these days about who we are or what we're becoming and what the future holds. Will we make it? And if we do, what will we look like in the future? Because in these days, there seems to be so much at stake. There seems to be so much in the air. There seems to be so many questions with little by way of answers. Our theme for this year at Gateway has been rest assured. For 2019, we've been talking about what it means to rest assured. That no matter what, as we face both as individuals, as a family, and as a country, God's got this. And today we want to just pause and celebrate Canada. Because when I look around our country, as beautiful as it is, too often we make the, the focus of, uh, uh, on, on, our, on our Canada by the challenges or the problems that we face as a nation. We, we talk about the leadership questions. We have elections coming up. And we, we talk about the financial questions or homelessness and mental health, identity questions, climate change, health care, education, Tolerance, intolerance, acceptance, what is it? What is it not? So many questions. Will we continue to be a nation that builds bridges or will we just be wall tending? I believe that when these moments of uncertainty take over, it is the church, it is you and I as Christ followers that our attitude is as much a witness as our actions. Let me say that again. As Christ followers in a world and in a country where there seems to be so much at stake, Our attitude is as much a witness as our actions, that God will help it, help us, that we will that we will allow our faith to be reflected and to be felt as we consider the challenges in our land. That God's got this and not our fear. May I encourage you to take a moment and just say, you know what? God's got let's let's say this together. God's got this. God's got this. The message is clear for us personally as well, as it is for a country. That no matter what you're facing, whatever you're going to face this summer, I know that for some of you, you're facing some very difficult times, that I want you to know that God will always show up. He always does rest assured. No matter what, He has a plan, and His plan is called His kingdom come. But why does it always have to be just in the difficult situation? Sometimes our prayer and our focus, not only is it on the negative, but it's, it's more tuned in when there's some a problem. That's when we pray more. That's when we focus in more. That's when we kind of read more. And we kind of, we, we, we have problems and that's what gets our attention towards God. Why can't God make himself known in the good times and in the easy moments? I think he does. In fact, I know he does and I know you do. But sometimes we don't always recognize the blessings of God. And Canada Day is a day, a time just to, just to pause and to recognize that with every sunrise, with every sunset, I sit out every single morning and I thank God for such a great day and a place to call home. I sit out with my cup of coffee in my backyard and I just breathe in that fresh air and I thank God every single day. We have a fridge full of food. All of you are going to eat well this weekend. You're going to eat well this afternoon and tonight. The the water we drink and our health. We often key in when our bodies get sick and we wonder, well, where is God or what's God doing? But we often take for granted the complexities of our bodies, natural mechanisms every single day that right now your heart's beating and you're not having to tell it to beat. It continues to beat, that your brain activity continues to function. Some of us don't function as well as others, but it functions, it functions. And that we take for granted so many things that just happen every single day, your lungs, your breathing, and all of this is a gift of God and his blessings for you and I. Think about it. From far and wide, our country is safe. People are wanting to come here to live. They're looking to come to this country. We're still one of the most desirable places to live in all of the world. And when life has its challenges, you can come to this country and you can become and be just about anything you want. Now this weekend, we celebrate. We laugh and we eat and we enjoy fires and s'mores and, and, and spider dogs and fireworks. And we thank God for this land that we enjoy and the freedom that it affords. We remember and we give thanks and we proclaim fresh faith in our God who holds our tomorrow. And I wonder sometimes if that wasn't at least in part of what was happening with the disciples on the last eve of the Last Supper. Not the s'mores part. I don't know if they had s'mores back then. I know they took camel cookies and tahini and I, I don't, yeah, it just wouldn't work. But, but the remembering, the remembering and the thanking and the proclaiming. 
For three years they had journeyed with Jesus in declaring the coming of His kingdom to all, but now they had come to this crossroads. Either Jesus initiates world transformation or they settle for a personal variation of such. And the Scriptures tell us that Jesus, on the night in which He was betrayed, He took the bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do it and remember, and remember me. And in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup and he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. We sang about that just a few moments ago. That whenever you drink it, you do in remembrance of me. That whenever you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. For three years, the disciples believed that Jesus would destroy Rome and establish his kingdom over all of the earth. And yet this night, he would declare that it was a new covenant that it was a new day, my body for you, my blood for you, my life's for you. When you eat, when you drink, you do in remembrance, you do in thanksgiving, and you do in proclamation. These are the three things that I believe that we are called to today, this Canada Day, both personally and from far and wide, that we need to remember all of God's goodness. We need to be thankful for all of His goodness, and we need to tell all of His great goodness today. For today is a day when our prayer is that God would make himself known throughout all the land, far and wide, that you and I are to be the presence of God to our friends and to our neighbors and to our community. Jesus taught us that we are to be the agent of the will of God here on this earth, that we are to be the expression of God's grace, good news. It's the simplest expression of the will of God is for you and I, the church, to bring the good news of God's grace and mercy and His plan to all the people in our neighborhoods, our communities, uh, our city, and of course, Canada. You and I are called and compelled and commissioned to go and to let people know, both by our words and our actions and our lifestyle, that God has a better way, that God has a better plan. Now, sadly, when this news is presented in our culture and our communities today, it's increasingly second-guessed. This good news is rejected, and our motives are often questioned when we, wear, when we decide that we want to share that our way is no longer considered a way, let alone the way. The good news is not so good anymore to people. But Canada Day, then, is a good time for you and I as Christ followers to pause and to ask some questions. Is my life... Is my life a reflection of the grace and the love of God to my neighbors? This weekend, last week, the week that has come, this summer, will my life reflect God's grace and love? Will my life give off the aroma and the fragrance of Jesus everywhere I go? That when I walk into a room, when I walk into a place, they go, there is something about my presence that is different when I'm there. Is that what they say about you? Is my life a reflection of the will of God that is being done in my life over and over and over again in the lives of those within my community? Think about it. Every day the sun begins as the sun rises in the east, and it was planned and it was wanted in the heartbeat of God so that those who do not know of his love can experience a loving relationship with his son. God's desire is that you and I will demonstrate this, that we would actually live our lives in such a way that actually says that God's not mad. That God's not mad at people. And sometimes we think, well, what do you mean? Is he not mad at this crisp, mixed up, confusing, and sinful world? No. No, he's not. Nor does he want to punish it any more than he's looking to punish you for doing the same thing in your life. What he's angry about is sin. What he's mad about is the evil of this world that has captured the heart of his creation and perverted their lives and our desires and our brokenness. Rather, God's good news is that he wants to show you and I a freedom and a joy and a peace and a happiness that that happens through a personal relationship with him. And that all that is destroying hope and peace and love, all of our sinful and wrong behavior is only an attempt, a desperate attempt to make our lives right, to fill in the blanks of what is missing and to make our own peace. Our mandate, our calling as Christ followers What should be the song of our heart and our community is that for our country, for our city of London, from far and wide, we are to demonstrate the kingdom of God birthed in our hearts and our lives that we would rub shoulders with each and every day, that we would let our lights shine bright, that we would love passionately, that we would forgive deeply, 
that we would be willing to be a people who would go the extra mile, even when people will question our motives or our agenda. There is nothing more discouraging at times when people do that, but from far and wide, this is the only way that God will be truly known in our nation. When we love others best, we love God most. Let me say that again. When we love others best, we love God the most. John said, let us love one another, for love comes from God. And everyone who has been born of God knows God, and whoever does not know God, because God is love. And from far and wide, God wants us to be known by the nations, and He wants to be known through you and I. God will always show up in the tough times. God is always present in the good times. But he is wanting to make himself known in the nations. He is wanting to make himself known in Canada. The question is, will he be made known? You and I are the ones to answer that question today because we have the responsibility of making this gospel good again, to make the good news, the great and awesome story that it is that there is a God who loves our neighbors, who loves our friends and those that we work with, that God is looking for you and I as the church to show up and to make this wonderful message, the good news, great again. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let me just pray with you today. Father, I just thank you so much for your goodness today. And now as we about to share in communion together, Lord, we want to remember. We will do so in remembrance of everything that you have done. We will take time, Lord, and say thank you for your personal redemption. We sang about redemption in our own lives, how you redeemed us, you, you purchased our lives. So we will pause to remember, oh God. We will pause and we will give thanks. We will give thanks for what you did on the cross. We thank, give thanks that you're coming back again. But we will also pause and we will give thanks for all of your many blessings, all of the great things that you have done in our lives. And we will proclaim we will resolve afresh to do something this summer that will share your goodness to our friends, to our neighbors, into our city. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We're going to go into a time of communion right now. I'm going to invite you just to get into small little groups of four, five, three, two, whatever. Get into some groups and then very quickly just someone come up, get a glass of juice and, uh, and some cups and get some bread and then go right back to your, court, to your group and to begin to share with one another, pray with one another. I'm going to come back in a few minutes and invite you to pray about a few specific things. We want to pray for our leadership. We want to pray for some situations in Canada. But come on up, get into some groups, share with one another, love on one another, share God's goodness with one another, and we'll be back in just a few minutes to lead you in prayer. Yeah.
you're still praying with one another, that's fine, but we also want to give you an opportunity to pray for just a few other things. The first thing we want to invite you to do is to pray for our national leadership, both uh, both in Canada, in Ottawa, in Toronto, our premier, as well as our our mayor and all of our municipal leaders. So that's up on the screen. And we invite you to just to pray for our leadership today. Take a few minutes uh, and go ahead and to pray for them. thank you for our leadership today within our country. We do pray for Justin Trudeau, our, our Prime Minister, oh God. We thank you, Father, for all of those in Ottawa that give lead us leadership to our country. Lord, we pray for them today. Their job is not easy. We ask that you would just continue to bless them, and may they have ears to hear you today. Father, we pray for Doug Ford, our Premier of Ontario, and for all of those who work provincially to make Ontario just the great place that it is. And Lord, as well, for Ed Holder, our Mayor, and for our City Council members, Lord, leadership is never easy. To wake up every morning and know that what feels like most of the population hates you, second guesses you, are against everything that you are trying to do and yet you rise up they rise up every morning just wanting to do what's right so father i just pray that you would strengthen them may they hear you today may they have ears to listen to what you would have to say and i do pray today that for every single one of our leaders both provincially federally and municipally today lord would you encourage them just encourage them today Lord, let there be no discouragement. They have so much on their plate that somehow they could know that the church wishes to encourage and that, Lord, they are there because you said that they are there. So may they look to you and may they be encouraged by you. In Jesus' name. We're going to invite you to pray for marginalized people or people that come from uh, maybe difficult backgrounds are indigenous folks. And again, the issues with indigenous First Nations people, is, it's, it's so confusing even to uh, many of us Canadians who have been here for so many years. We don't understand all of the issues, but we do just need to pray that God will give us wisdom and direction. We want to pray for those who are coming into our country and, and those who are saying, I, I, I want to make this my homeland. And, and I, I have had the opportunity to talk to so many people. Uh, we actually have, side note, we have a, 
Bhutanese Nepalese church that is now meeting. You're gonna hear about more about this throughout the summer, but we have a Bhutanese Nepalese church that is meeting here from three until six every single Sunday now. They're wanting to become a part of us. The king of Bhutan kicked these people out of the country because they were Hindu. The Indians didn't want them, so they were farmed off to refugee camps in Nepal. Canada opened up its doors and invited them all to come, and so they have been migrating into Canada. The problem is they're migrating into Quebec, and they don't understand that language either, and they're already coming from Hindu, Nepalese, and, and Bhutan, Bhutanese backgrounds. And so for some unknown reason, they're landing in London. We have the largest single gathering of Bhutanese, Nepalese, people here in the city of London. There's over 3,000 of them. And they came to me a month, a month and a half ago and said, we want to start a church to reach our people. Can we meet here? And I said, oh yeah. Oh yeah, you can meet here. There are some great opportunities that we need to, to just be sensitive to what God would say. So we want to pray for them. We want to pray for those who are marginalized, those with mental health, those who are living on the streets, those who have no homes. There are so many people that are without a place to live. We are working on a, affordable housing here in the back half of our lands, but in the meantime, we have over 3,000 displaced families in the city of London alone. We need to pray for those today. So for those three areas, take a few minutes, and now let's just pray for them. Father, we pray today for our First Nations and our Indigenous uh, people, Lord. Father, I pray that you would forgive us of our ignorance and our indifference. Lord, for that which we don't understand, Lord, we will sometimes sit in judgment and criticism. Lord, you love them. You love them as much as you love anyone else in this world. And I pray that you would help us, O oh God, to have better understanding. I pray, Lord, that you would, uh, Lord, that you would bring restoration and forgiveness and healing. Lord, would you provide solutions where there is only confusion and question? Father, we thank you for those that are 
coming from other countries and other lands and saying, I want to raise my family here where it is safe. And Lord, I, I just pray for those who are new to our country and some of them we know and some of them we haven't taken the time to get to know them well and to discover, Lord, that they, they just want to raise their families in a place that is safe and secure and they want to give their children great opportunities, Lord, that we are afforded only because of our geography. And Lord, as they learn the language and they figure out how to buy a car and have a house and make a living and get a job and all the things that go with being fresh into, our, uh, into a new land and a new country and learning the language and understanding the colloquialisms and the mannerisms and, and, and all of that that comes. Lord, I just pray that you would help us to be agents of grace and mercy and love in their lives. Father, while we, most of us, will go home to nice houses and filled fridges and jobs on Tuesday, Lord, we do think of those who are marginalized in our city, those who are living on park benches and, Lord, who are in emergency shelters and in and abuse shelters and those who are waiting to find a place for lodging, those who are sleeping in their cars and, and don't have a job. And, Lord, again, the issues are so multifactorial. There are so many things that are going on. But, Lord, would you somehow... Would you somehow reach them, oh God? And thank God, Lord, for those people, those agencies and those uh, churches downtown that are doing a great work, Lord. We bless them in Jesus' name and we thank you for them. Oh Lord, we just pray for them in Jesus' name. May we always, Lord, may we always do our part to care for the poor. In Jesus' name. And the last we're gonna ask you to pray about issues. There are just a few issues that are current. They're kind of in the news all the time and everybody's talking about the mental health issues. Of course, we know it's a mental health crisis, the opioid crisis and drug addiction. And again, everybody's got all their opinions, but you know what? Opinions aside, these are real people with broken lives and Jesus loves them. People with identity issues. There's just a mass confusion anymore as to who we are and what we are. And again, I'm not trying to sit in any kind of judgment. I just know that that kind of confusion just does not bring about the best in a person's life. So for those who struggle with their identity issues and last, we want to pray for those for our environment. Climate change is a huge issue right now. And, and they're telling us there's not a few more years left. And I, you know, when you think about this and you read what Jesus said in the New Testament, he, pro he prophesied that all of this would come to pass. But you and I are now going to live through what he prophesied is going to come to pass as we see our climate uh, changing, our world changing, and the environment around it. We need to not only just do our part, but we also just need to pray. So take some opportunity time to do before we call you back together and we're going to end in prayer. But let's pray for just a couple of these issues, whatever God would put on your heart today.
just as you're ending your prayer, I'm going to invite you all to stand. We're going to stand and we're going to end with one last song. We can't have Canada Day without this song. But if I might remind you, it ends in a prayer. So let's sing with all of our heart, mind, and soul, O Canada. So much for being here with us this morning. We trust that that was meaningful and inspiring to you. We just want to remind you that now and through till Labor Day, we have our two experiences on Sunday, 9 and 10.30, so don't forget about those important details. And make sure before you leave this morning that you get your Beat the Heat treat, and we hope you have a fantastic uh, Canada Day weekend, and we look forward to seeing you next week.